Good morning, students. You are welcome to this time. Yeah. My name is Dr. George Mbei from Alex Equipment, Federal University in the Falike, <coughs> Nigeria. I'm from Mathematics and Statistics Department. And for this class, we'll be looking at concepts and reasons for business growth. The course itself is Introduction to Entrepreneurial Scale coded as ENT301. So like I said, the topic for this class is concepts and reasons for business growth. It is a common say that whatever has a beginning has an end. However, for a business conscious setting, the saying do not always hold. This is true because it is not the conscious intention of any entrepreneur or business um, owner to have his business come to an end at any given time. I want to believe that anybody who establishes a business has that conscious intention that the business keeps growing and keeps growing. And um, in life, beginning a thing is not always the problem. The problem is how to sustain what anyone or anybody begins. That is to say, if I establish a business, establishing a business may not be the bigger problem per se, but a much bigger problem is how to grow that business. And if eventually the business grows, there is a much more bigger problem, and that is how to maintain this business that have grown up already and like we all know entrepreneurs they are a major factor in change when we talk about business changes changes that happens in the society entrepreneurs they are a major change so that's an introduction to concept and reasons for business growth. so basically we are looking at why do business need to grow what are the reasons that will affect business growth what are the models for business growth are there ways in which one can enhance his business okay so the first we want to look at is problems facing business growth the first point is demographic issues sometimes when businesses are established in demography that does not that do not favor such businesses it affects the growth of that business it is always important that while citing a business or while considering a location where that business should be established, one should ensure that demographic considerations is properly taken care of. Secondly is motivation. Whatever motivates an individual has a big role to play in the person's business growth. The motivation I have to enter into a business would determine how committed I will be in that business. Sometimes people find themselves in business out of chance, but if they are self-motivated, it has a long way to play in making their business to grow. And the third reason is entrepreneurial characteristics. How good am I in managing my time? Am I somebody who is hot-tempered? Am I a glutton? Do I have self-control? This individual characteristics of an entrepreneur has a role to play in the growth of such business. So these three points are one of, are one of some of the major um, are the major points. There may be other minor ones, but these are key problems that are facing business growth. Okay. So as we move on, we want to look at types of business growth model. So we have two fundamental types of business growth model. These two model have proposed that any business that will need to grow must follow any of these two models. So the first one is Stone and Wilson model. Stone and Wilson say, are saying that business for a business to grow, it must be in five stages. It must be in five stages. So the stage one is the stage we call conception or the testing. Nobody wakes up one morning and establishes a business. There will always be a time of conceiving that idea. You give it a deep thought, you talk about it, you think over it, you consider it, 
that is the first stage sometimes you may you may just be trying something casually all these are worse to now waste and call the, the the model that takes place in the first stage now the second stage is the stage of growth or abort they believe that if i conceive an idea in stage one i am supposed to grow that idea in the in the second stage on the other way i can conceive an idea in stage one but when i get to stage two i will abort that idea because perhaps the idea may not be uh, realistic so now the stage three is the stage of growth so having conceived an idea in stage one and having um, developed that idea in, second, in, in stage two, in stage three, the growth, the business is expected to grow. So uh, if you are bought it in stage two, nobody talks about growth. But once the business idea is developed in stage two, in the third stage, it is expected that the business grows. In the fourth stage is, this, is the stage we call the stage of maturity. A business is said to attain the maturity stage when it has attained a stage where it is no longer at risk of easily folding up so there are businesses for some reasons i may not be mentioning names but they have they have built a strong base of branches assets a number of employees uh, 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 database and all that so when you put all these factors together those businesses are said to have attained maturity stage and the fifth stage is a stage of regrowth or decline a business can attain maturity in stage four but may start to decline at the fifth stage or in the other way a business having attained the maturity stage at, grade four, at stage four may also need to regrow that is why you see some business having three branches when they start after after some time one or two years they will have 10 branches they are growing this is what we call regrowth the business have grown but they need to grow again now the s curve model says that every business grows is in three stages the first stages is the slow stage that is the stage when you are beginning you have you may be doing the business only you don't have any staff or you may have only one or two people that is helping you the business is at the slow you know lower stage of development the second stage is the stage where the growth where the business grows faster they call it the high speed growth stage now the third stage is when the business attains maturity I will believe that once a business attains maturity, that business has built enough base, enough strong base where it may not be easily shaken, regardless of external factors. So having considered this, I will, will stop at this time. Thank you for listening and the topic will continue in our next class. Thank you for your time.